यूनिक फैक्टराइजेशन थ्योरम दिस इज ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थ्योरम फॉर योर फ्यूचर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट प्राइम एलिमेंट्स एंड वॉट आर एसोसिएट्स लेट आर बी ए यूक्लिडियन रिंग तो आर इज ए यूक्लिडियन रिंग एंड स्मॉल ए इट इज ए नॉन जीरो नॉन यूनिट एलिमेंट इन आर Suppose that A is written as P1, P2, P3, so on, Pm, and this is equal to Q1, Q2, Q3, so on, Qn. Here, all P1, P2, so on, Pm, and Q1, Q2, so on, Qn, they are prime elements of R, where the P's and Q's are prime elements of R. Then either M is then M is equal to N first, and each P is an associate of some Q, and each Q is an associate of some P. You may have seen uh, the same result when you uh, use some prime numbers. Then you will find this: the m is equal to n, and each p is an associate of some q, and each q is an associate of some p. Associate means p can be written as a multiple of q, or and q can be written as a multiple of p. See its proof. We have p1, p2, so on, p m is equal to q1, q2, so on, q n. now here p1 is a divisor of p1 p2 so on pm so p1 will divide this one also because both are they are equal it means p1 is a divisor of q1 q2 so on q1 this is the same written here if p1 is a divisor of q1 p2 so on pm then p1 is also a divisor of q1 q2 so on q1 so p1 must divide at least one of q1 q2 so on q1 why because all of q1 q2 so on qn they are prime elements so p1 must divide at least one of them since r is a commutative ring therefore without any loss of generality we may suppose that p1 divides q1 you can suppose p1 divides any other q but here for the theorem we are supposing that p1 divides q1 So, but P1 and Q1 both are prime elements in R. Therefore, P1 and Q1 must be associates. Since they are prime, so one prime cannot divide another prime. So they must be associates, and we have Q1 is equal to U times P1, where this U is a unit in R. Thus, we can write P1 P2 so on Pm is equal to U P1 into Q2 Q3 Q so on Qn. why because this q1 is replaced by u p1 since p1 is non zero so we can cancel p1 from both sides then you will get p2 p3 so on pm is equal to u into q2 q3 so on qn now repeat the this argument on this relation with p2 if n is greater than m means here number of terms is greater than here number of terms then after m steps after m steps this left hand side will become one why because in the next step we have q2 equal to v into p2 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 will cancel each other similarly we can get here uh, proceeding in the same manner we will get here left uh, one at the left hand side while the right hand side reduces to a product of some units u v z and so on etc in r a certain number of queues definitely some queues will left over how many queues n minus m means the axis of n over m but the queues are prime elements of r it is given and so they are not units in r so the product of some units in r and certain number of queues cannot be equal to 1 therefore n cannot be greater than m and thus n is less than or equal to m so it is clear that n is less than or equal to m and cannot be greater than m similarly interchanging the roles of p's and q's we get m less than or equal to n means you take uh, q1 q2 so on qm qn at the left hand side and p1 p2 so on pm at the right hand side and apply the same logic then you will get m is less than or equal to n so from these two inequalities we get m is equal to n so first thing is first part is proved 
also in the above process we have shown that every p is an associate of some q why because q1 is u into p1 it means p, p and q both are p1 and q1 both are associate or p1 is a some associate of q or q1 is some associate of p and conversely every q is an associate of, associate of some p and the theorem has been completely established means we need to show two things first your m is equal to n and second every p is an associate associate of some q and every q is an associate of some p so this theorem is true see there is a note every non zero element in a euclidean ring r can be uniquely written as a product of prime elements or is a unit in r therefore a euclidean ring is a unique factorization domain so after this theorem we move on to next Uh, which is our the field of coefficients field of quotients means let us see its definition c definition a ring r can be embedded in a ring s if s contains a subset x s dash such that r is isomorphic to s dash see r is a ring and s is a ring and s contains a subset s dash and this r is isomorphic to s dash in fact this s dash is a sub ring of s <coughs> and this r there is a mapping from r to s dash which satisfies isomorphism property so r is isomorphic to s dash only then then we can say that r as embedded in a ring s if s contains a subset s dash such that there is a mapping isomorphic mapping isomorphism from r to s dash if d is a commutative ring without zero divisors then we shall see that it can be embedded in a field f that is there exists a field f which contains a subset d dash isomorphic to d we shall construct a field with the help of elements of d and this field f will contain a subset d dash such that this d is isomorphic to d dash this field f is called the field of coefficients of d or simply the coefficient field of d in some book you will find coefficient field and in some book you will find field of quotients on account of isomorphism of d on to d dash we can say that d and d dash are abstractly identical therefore if we identify d with d then we can say that the quotient field f of d is a field containing d also see that f is the smallest field containing d there is a motivation for constructing this quotient field Uh, we don't need it right now now we move on to a theorem before this uh, we have some notes c note let i be the ring of integers then this i is a euclidean ring and so a unique factorization domain the field of quotients of i is the field of rational numbers c if the primitive polynomial fx in ix primitive polynomial means the uh, all the coefficients of fx will have their greatest common divisor equal to unity so if the primitive polynomial fx in ix ix means the set of polynomials where the coefficients are integers can be factored as the product of two polynomials having rational coefficients it can be factored as the product of two polynomials having integer coefficients so this polynomial fx which is a primitive polynomial it can be factored as a product of two polynomials and these two polynomials the coefficients of these two polynomials are rational coefficients if this is true then this primitive polynomial can be factored as the product of two polynomials with their coefficients as integers so see the theorem 8 let f be the field of quotients of a unique factorization domain r if fx belongs to rx is both primitive and irreducible means fx cannot be reduced if irreducible as an element of rx then it is irreducible as an element of fx if fx is irreducible as an element of rx then it is irreducible as an element of fx Conversely, if the polynomial f(x) or 
in Rx is irreducible as an element of Fx, then it is also irreducible as an element of Rx. So both way, see its proof. Let Fx be a primitive member of Rx. It is given, first this is given in the theorem that Fx belongs to Rx. So Fx is a primitive member of Rx. Suppose uh, in from the first part, that fx is irreducible in rx see fx is irreducible in rx then we need to show that it is irreducible in as an element of fx we suppose that f is irreducible in rx but it is not irreducible or it is reducible in fx since f is a field and a small f fx is reducible in fx therefore we must have fx is equal to gx into hx why because f is reducible, so we can write fx product of two polynomials, gx into hx, where gx hx both are in fx and they are of positive degrees. Now you can write gx is equal to g not x by a and hx is equal to h not x by b. No problem in writing this, where a b belongs to r and where g zero h and h zero x both belong to r x. Also, we can write g 0 x at alpha into g 1 x and g 0 h 0 x at beta into h 1 x where alpha is c 0 and beta is c h 0 and we are g 1 x h 1 x they are primitive members of r x thus using these relations we can get f x f x is to g x into h x means g 0 x by a 0 g 0 x is alpha into g 1 x so alpha by a into g into g 1 x and this hx is beta by b into h1x. So fx is alpha beta by ab, g1x into h1x. It implies that ab fx is equal to alpha beta into g1x into h1x. Since g1 and h1 both are both primitive members of rx, therefore g1hx is also a primitive member of rx. Means their multiplication g1x into, H2, into h1x is also a primitive member of rx. Therefore, from this relation one, we conclude that fx and g1x into h1x, they are associates. Why? Because fx can be written as some multiple of g1x into h1x, so both are associates in rx. Thus, fx is equal to ug1x into h1x, where u is a unit in rx, and so a unit in r. Let ug1x is written as g2x, then fx is written as g2x into h1x, where g2 and h1 both belong to rx. See here, degree of g2x is equal to degree of gx, and degree of h1x is equal to degree of hx. Therefore, degree of gx, g2x is greater than zero, and degree of h1x is greater than zero. It means neither g2x nor h1x is a unit in rx. Why? Because their degree degrees are greater than zero. Thus, fx is equal to g2x into h1x is a proper factorization of fx in rx. This contradicts the statement that fx is irreducible in rx. Earlier, we have supposed that fx is irreducible in rx, and we have taken fx to be reducible in capital fx. But now we are getting a contradiction that this fx is irreducible in rx. Here we have seen that this fx is reduced as g2x into h1x in rx which contradicts our supposition so soon hence fx must be irreducible in fx capital fx now see its converse suppose this fx is a primitive member of rx and is irreducible as an element of fx now we need to show that this fx is irreducible in rx then to prove that fx is also irreducible as an element of rx let fx is equal to gx into hx, where gx, hx both belong to rx. Then fx will be irreducible in rx if one of gx or hx is a unit in rx, that is a unit in r. Now gx, hx both belong to rx can also be treated as gx, hx in fx. Since this small f is irreducible as an element of fx uh, in the converse part, therefore one of gx or hx must be of degree zero. Why? Because it is irreducible. Suppose degree gx is equal to zero, then gx is a constant polynomial. 
Why? Because its degree is zero. It means it is a constant polynomial. We have x to the power zero type term. Suppose g x is equal to small k in R, then f x can be written as k into h x. From here, f x is equal to g x into h x, and g x is k, so f x is k into h x. Now this small f x is a primitive member of R x. Therefore, c f is a unit in R. If k is not a unit in R, then content of k h x, a k h in x, cannot be a unit in R. and so it cannot be equal to c into cf hence k must be a unit in r therefore fx is irreducible as an element of rx so this completes your proof after this we will move on to next theorem in our next class if you have any query or any difficulty you just send me a message in the chat box or raise your hands this lecture will be available on youtube also so there is a comment section you can also make your comments there